Coming up on Network Africa. Several people killed as a car bomb explodes by a checkpoint in the outskirts of the Somali capital, Mogadishu. Dozens of people arrested in South Africa after incidents of looting and torching of buildings and vehicles of foreign nationals. Plus, Malawi's president, Pita Motorika, warns opposition parties against any planned disruptions at airports and border points, else they will be met with force. Hello and a warm welcome to the program. I'm Tenyola Shiboale. We begin this week with stories and happenings that made headlines over the weekend. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres arrived in the Democratic Republic of Congo on Saturday as the country faces an Ebola epidemic which has claimed over 2,000 lives. Mr. Guterres, alongside other senior members of the UN, came to help mobilize additional support for the Ebola outbreak and also review the UN peacekeeping mission. On Sunday, he promised to continue support for the Army of DRC in its fight against armed groups. Visiting the eastern city of Beni, Secretary General Antonio Guterres said it was necessary to go on the offensive against the rebels. I am very happy to be in the territory of Benin today. I could not go ahead without saying that I have met brave people of this magnificent territory and in the midst of terrible epidemic of Ebola and other health problems such as measles, malaria and cholera, they unfortunately still have to deal with great insecurity. I wish to reaffirm here today the full support of MONUSCO in the fight against armed groups that spread fear and death. MONUSCO and its partners of the DRC, the Congolese Armed Forces and the Congolese National Police continue to work together to restore peace and security in the region. Some 16,000 peacekeepers are deployed in the country, making it one of the largest UN missions in the world. A Sudanese judge formally indicted former President Omar al-Bashir on charges of possessing illicit foreign currency and corruption. Questioned in court for the first time, Bashir said that he had received $25 million from Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. We did not supply the money to the Bank of Sudan because we meant to hide the source, and we did so because this was the desire of the prince. Yes, the Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, and I had hoped that this would have been a secret court in order not to show the name of the prince. He did not want his name to appear anywhere, which is why he sent the money on a private plane with a private envoy. This was his wish, for it not to be known. However, Bashir's lawyer says his client denies the charges and that witnesses for the defense will be presented at the next hearing. The judge denied a request for bail and said a decision on the duration of Bashir's detention will be taken at a hearing on September the 7th. To our main stories now, South Africa has woken up to another wave of attacks and looting of foreign-owned businesses overnight in central Johannesburg. Nigerians are among those affected, and as the footage you are seeing shows, several mechanic workshops and car dealerships have been looted and burnt. A Metro policeman trying to defuse the violence has also been shot by an armed looter. Jepstown in downtown Johannesburg, Jewel Street and the Malvern area were most affected, and 31 people have been arrested for public violence. The incident follows a fire allegedly over a domestic dispute that left three people dead. Other parts of the province and the country are on high alert over threatened violence by the locals directed at foreign nationals. Let's get more on this story from our South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Dibia. Hello Betty. Hello uh, Tenny. Betty, this violence occurred overnight. We know parts of the country are on high alert. But what's the latest at this time? 
Well, I can tell you there is tension in several parts of not just uh, Johannesburg, but Johannesburg is a worst hit uh, to the point where the national uh, or the police minister, uh, Becky Trelle, he, he now says that the, the lootings or the, the situation in Johannesburg uh, is a national emergency and that a lot more policemen uh, have to be deployed. How much difference that will make? Um, I know the police will take a lot of strain because these are different places. You have Malvern, Gippistown, uh, Ekurulani, and Sunnyside in Pretoria. Pretoria has uh, to do with what happened last week, where uh, a taxi uh, operator was shot. And um, his people now said they're going to continue the fight against uh, alleged um, drug dealers. So they, they want to take the fight to them. So there's a lot of tension and there's looting. In the case of Gippistown, it started an incident that happened yesterday, Sunday. Uh, now snowballed into this, where people are saying, "Yeah, well, we lost, we lost a lot of things, and uh, we're, we we had to start looting." Mm. Looting people's shops, you know, it's 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 unfortunate, but it's sending out the wrong message to 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 people out there. Yeah, Betty. For those that have now been arrested, what do we know about them, and do we know of any motive behind the attack? Um, the story, it, it, uh, there was a fire. Now the fire incident, word on the street, not the official line now, has it that. Um, there was a domestic dispute. A woman who found her partner with another woman set this building with a lot of... Uh, it's called hijacked buildings here, but people live in not very nice settings, uh, but they're in the building Spain rents to certain people. Um, so she set fire to the building, allegedly, and, and um, while the building was burning, three people died. Two died one when the wall of the building collapsed and, 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 and they died. The woman, two men and a woman. So the woman has been identified. I think she's a local from the name. Um, now, once the fire started, people now took to the streets in that area. The area is quite notorious for a lot of crime. Even the police has gone several times to, to uh, raid for, for arms. So this now turned into a lot of criminality where people's shops, Nigerians are, are living there as well. So a, a lot of people, not just Nigerians were affected, even some locals who have businesses. But you know, some of these other smaller business operators do not have insurance. Yeah. So that's a problem for them, the compensation, and they'll have to start all over again. But it's quite hectic. The footage that you, you are seeing there is one of the Nigerians who claims that is or oh, that was his uh, a mechanic workshop, and all the cars burnt. Some cars were stolen, but some have been recovered by the police as well. Well, Betty, this is not the first time foreigners have been, you know, attacked and targeted. How concerned is the government about foreigners, especially about how safe it is to conduct business in the country? Well, we've had condemnations as usual. We've had arrests as usual. Uh, it, in the course of trying to tell what was going on, a policeman was shot. Um, but they're doing what they can. I, I, the, the police minister is saying that uh, it's a national emergency. They're going to be um, deploying more policemen. But there's so many places. You still have the truckers issue further down in the KZN, I think, and in the Western Cape, where um, the truckers are having problems because of attacks as well. Mm. People from the Sadiq region going across. But now you have counter uh, threats to saying, look, you think you have monopoly on violence. We too, we're ready for you. So now they're taking a closer look at it and trying to see what they can do. But there is so much, so much violence and protests mm. going in this country for various reasons. Mm. Um, and, and no one is really spared, even the locals, because some local businesses were affected in this case of GPS Town and Malvern as well. A lot of destruction, uh, I mean, trashing of, of, of shops and looting. It's it's just, it's, it's I don't know, it's it's unfortunate. It's yeah. amazing yeah, it's, you know, to, to just see the pictures coming out of GPS Town. It's very, very uh, unfortunate. Betty, and just before I let you go, there have been some reports about an attack on the Nigerian Head Commission in South Africa. What can you tell us about that? Um, if it's the message that um, I think you're referring to, that is wrong. Um, there was an incident last week, late last week, I think Friday or Thursday, where some Nigerians, frustrated from um, 
the loss they suffered in the attacks in, in the Pretoria CBD went over to, to the High Commission. And probably in their frustration, maybe they were impatient to be attended to. They decided to attack the gates, uh, jumping over the, the gates of the... And the gate of the High Commission is, is two. When you pass through one, there is another one or through which cars. So they destroyed the sensor and uh, the casing of the sensor. But that was quickly resolved, and some of the officials went with them mm. to to visit where the, the shops were said to be. But the security situation, too, was quite tense in that area at, at the time, and the police advised the officials to leave. But uh, no South African attacked the Nigerian High Commission. That is untrue. Mm. I can tell you that. And um, I don't know. Um, why that story is still going down because we we treated that issue uh, last week in the package that we sent the report that we sent it was nigerians who were frustrated who but um the damage was to the gates which i'm sure they they may have resolved at this time all right then betty thank you for clearing that up our south africa bureau chief betty divia speaking to us thank you thank you Away from South Africa, reports coming from Somalia say at least three people have been killed and four others wounded after a suicide car bomb blast targeted a security checkpoint in the capital, Mogadishu. Officials say the explosion also killed a police officer in Avgoye as the attackers attempted to overrun the checkpoint while security officials opened fire, killing an attacker. No group has yet claimed responsibility for the deadly attack, but Al-Shabaab militants are known to frequently carry out uh, such attacks in the country. Joining us now is Somali journalist Mohamed Mualimu to give us some more uh, details on this. Thank you for joining us on the program. Mohamed, of course, this attack happened early on this morning. What's the situation now at this time? Uh, the situation seems to be calm now. Uh, this morning, actually, we were so tense and there was a lot of confusion and uh, because that checkpoint uh, is so busy, so that's why that uh, it was uh, very chaotic situation this morning. But uh, everything is now calm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, what has been the government's reaction so far? What are you hearing? Uh, the government said that the the foiled attack, uh, planned attack that Al Shabaab was going to carry out. Uh, in Mogadishu, and uh, they also said that three attackers were killed, and uh, one of them was a suicide attacker. Uh, but also, three other civilians were also confirmed dead, uh, while ten others injured. So the plus was so huge, and it was had in different parts of the capital, Mogadishu. And no group so far claimed the responsibility of the attack, but actually, apparently, this kind of attack is carried out usually in Mogadishu by uh, militant group Al Shabaab. Mm. Yeah, Mogadishu is not new to attacks like this. Is the government really winning the war against insurgency? What would you say? The government is trying to uh, counterattack uh, and, you know, dismantle Al Shabaab, the, the militant group. But actually, they are still uh, have 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 the capability. capability they still have the capability to carry out attacks because every time they, they, they pump in, in different places. Uh, but the government recently has been trying to make advances in some parts of, 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 of southern Somalia. And, and this morning they have captured at least two places from militant groups Al-Shabaab. Uh, but still Al-Shabaab controls a lot of uh, large number of, 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 of territories, uh, mainly in southern part of Somalia. And uh, uh, they have uh, also getting a lot of taxation, a lot of money from even where the government control is. So it seems that the government is, is trying all its best, but actually uh, no winning sign is so far uh, actually seen is in, in the ground. Al-Shabaab is still is powerful and they are trying, uh, they, are, they, have, they can carry out attacks any, any place, any time. And, and that's why that still, uh, you know, people are intimidated and and a lot of problems have been actually uh, experienced in the past years. But actually, it seems that uh, recently Al Shabaab attacks in in, in 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 the capital was actually somehow uh, decreasing because of the security was tightened by the security agencies and so on. 
All right, Somali journalist Mohamed Mohalimu, thank you for giving us an update on that story. Meanwhile, the administration of the Somali region of Jubaland has condemned what it called the abduction of its security minister by the National Somali Authorities. Police in the capital, Mogadishu, confirmed that the minister, Abdirashid Janan, was arrested for what they describe as serious crimes upon his arrival at Mogadishu Airport. Reports say the UN-backed government is trying to exercise greater control over the regional state. Last month, it refused to recognize the re-election of Ahmed Mohamed Islam, known by his nickname, Madobe, to lead Jubaland. The administration is one of the country's richest areas with the lucrative port of Kismayo as its capital.